going to talk to you about a very important process for the creation of our game, the engineering design cycle. First of all, what exactly is the engineering design cycle? This cycle is a generalized way of approaching a problem and developing a concept or system till it fulfills what is desired. This process is continuous, meaning that after one iteration, you will start back at square one and repeat. The engineering design cycle in its most basic form consists of the following steps. Ask, imagine, plan, create, and improve. Our educational computer game had to meet the following criteria to have a competitive standing. 1. The game must teach a STEM concept. 2. The player must interact every 10 seconds. 3. The game must keep the user entertained for 5 minutes. 4. The game should be fun and appropriate for all players. And 5. The game must be made with either Scratch, Kodu, or Game Maker. Some examples we thought up included a planet orbiting simulator, a game teaching about properties of light and waves and also a game that let the player control chemicals in containers. We then planned, or we went through these ideas and dozens of others, and evaluated them based on how educational, difficult, or interactive they were, and exactly how the player will interact. If that idea seemed feasible after the planning phase, we created a prototype and playtested the idea. For each of these prototypes, we branched off into multiple other cycles, where we asked, how can we improve this game? When we finally decided which STEM concept we would build on, we had to convert the prototype to a fully functional game. Another important constraint for the creation of our game is what software we must use to create it. Our team chose to use GameMaker. Why? Because GameMaker allows us to assign behaviors to objects. To be brief, GameMaker has rooms, which are separate containers for objects. Objects, on the other hand, are entities that we can prescribe behaviors, conditions, starting values, so that these objects may interact with other objects in the same room. We can switch between rooms to create the illusion of having different levels. Our final game, Fizzball, uses this functionality. In Fizzball, it is the player's responsibility to get the ball to the end of the level with the use of forces. To add challenge and let the player draw their own conclusions and forces, we added a power level which trains according to the size of the force and time. The background footage for this video contains the gameplay for Fizzball. Our team was responsible for creating an educational computer game for the 16th Annual Freshman Engineer Design Day at NC State. When it comes to designing a game that goes through our constraints, we had to do some research in order to understand what it is we should target to create an immersive game. Traditional physics classrooms offer very little interactivity in the explanation of forces to students. Students in North Carolina physics classrooms get the chance to perform experiments to prove physical laws and theories. With these experiments, you observe, you record, and you crunch the numbers. Our game concept decided to fill in this gap by adding a level of simulated interactivity. We took a simplified approach to the presentation of our game, where the objective is obvious and the player must conserve energy to make it to the end. Over the course of creating our game, we only faced some major design challenges. Time, game difficulty, and game complexity. Time is an obvious problem. Game complexity, on the other hand, is affected by time. When I say game complexity, I mean creating a functional game that is stable at the software level and the user level. Since time was a scarce resource for us, some parts of our game run on unstable code, which does not account for all conditions a user may throw at it meaning that the game had a fair chance of crashing or doing something totally unintended. Creating the game itself, on the other hand, was not a big challenge, as the game engine for Game Maker is straightforward, and some members in our team had experience using it in the past. Finally, we have some advice for future students who have to do the familiar project. First of all, never procrastinate it. Always keep track of where you are in your project and try to reach new milestones. Next, Keep communicating about the ideas and different stage for your design cycle, even if your team is not together in the same room. Meeting up once a week can work, but a lot of time can be lost trying to catch up at the beginning of the meeting. Also, finding a day that works for everyone can be difficult. Most other teams made games that talk some story and not simulation. This game our gave a competitive edge, but there was a catch. Our game was very difficult for players, and what we tried to make up for in realism and simulation hurt us. We ended up winning second place at Design Day, a well-deserved title for what we accomplished and learned for this assignment.